Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial on BitCata. In this video I'm going to show you a few more options for uh, your input sources and then we are going to start to look at the automation and the um, generators for automation. So we are inside the UM, let's click an audio channel and let's load something like ISIM. Here we go from Arturia. Now let's load a uh, bit cutter. Here we go. Perfect. So now let's um, connect the keyboard to ISIM and um, let's load, um, yeah, on our page or like this one will do. Let's try it. Okay, that sounds good. Now we're going to introduce BitCutter again and we're going to initialize it, like so. We're going to set to infinite the play on the uh, AUM keyboard and we're, and we're going to press on the C3 note. Let's hide now the keyboard. So now we have a key which is always pressed, um, hitting effectively ice and producing a constant sound. And because it is an arpeggio, you will continually hear it and that uh, um, audio source is going directly into or through bit cutter. Now you can see here the input channel uh, one highlighted. Let's go to the input as we already know. Let's set the input bus number one to input channel number one and we have audio coming through. As you know in previous examples we use triggers and we set the what um, what the trigger will listen to, like for example in this case C1. And then we use sensitiveness, frequency and bandwidth to check, uh, to, f to ensure that the trigger is fired and the full recording starts. Now there is another way to actually accomplish that. So you can still use sensitiveness and then you can use this sequence slider to effectively uh, take in percentage an addition to the sensitiveness which comes from, from the sequencer as they're moving through the steps. And the highest um, percentage of increment that you are putting to sensitiveness to fire the triggers using this slider is based on when um, the step correspond to the input channel which is selected. So for example, when the input, when the step is number one, or better when the sequencer hits step number one, then you have the maximum um, effect into input bus number one from a sensitiveness point of view. And indeed, if you set the sensitiveness to off and you set the sequence to maximum, what will happen is that um, uh, when the sequencer hits step number one, you will see um, the trigger being fired all the time and will start to record one cell. And when the sequencer coming back, it will play the cell and kick off the next cell for recording. So let's try. So trigger, we put this a maximum. We also set the length and some attack and release. Have a look here. So second one is played and the first one has been recorded and now vice versa. Okay, so that is quite useful if you want to create um, uh, very quickly um, triggering of sequence. And note that I haven't also played, um, I haven't set the transport control in AUM to play because I always have input coming through because I have that key C3 holding on the AUM uh, keyboard. I want to now go to the input and show you a couple of um, further controls which I haven't mentioned in this window um, or this page. The low cut frequency, the high cut frequency, the automation gain control and the levels. Now let's see how we can use this. So let's go back to the trigger and let's increase the sequence to maximum. Let's go to the input page. You should start here, now sounds coming through. Okay, perfect. You can reduce the input of what is recorded in terms of signal. So let's try, we keep it lower. And it will go around another time and the input will be lower. You can hear it, it has been decreased. As well, you can increase it. And if you go up to 100%, it will be twice 
in terms of uh, input signal. Now you can cut the low frequency like so. You can hear that um, low frequencies have been cut. Or you can back to normal and you can cut high frequencies like so, moving down. You can hear now that I've cut some high frequencies here. So you can use the low cut to cut low frequency, increasing this. And you can use the high cut to cut high frequency, decreasing the slider. Okay, and let's put them back to normal. Something else as well you can do is you can use the automation gain control and you can use the slider to, ch to set how quickly the automation react to changes in uh, input signal. And be careful with this one because you can reach very high input uh, uh, amplitude and you can check here the level as you touch the automation gain control. So you go straight to max. The other thing I would say, be also, and you saw now that the volume has increased, be also careful that these can continue to automate in gain and therefore can also go in a situation where you have an infinite loop. Okay. So we covered everything in the inputs page and also on the triggers page with the exception of these controls at the top, which are for automation. And that is what we are going to do now. So here we have a length in terms of how much we are recording. So what we are going to do now, we are going to increase it a little bit more. So the recording will be longer but there will always be to 1.5625 as is written here. If I want to create a variation, I can change the length here, acting on this control. So I can go up something like that, 25%. And you see these arrow now moving uh, above or below the uh, yellow arrow. And this will mean that you will have a higher length when the um, green arrow is above and lower length when it is below. And that will help to create variety. It's practically in, um, a, gener in a generator for automation, almost similar to an LFO. And of course, you can set it to the middle, for example, and increase the length quite a bit, like so. Be careful as you do that, of course. I will probably keep it lower, something like this, and decrease the uh, the length, like so. If you want to change a further parameters of the automation, you click on Auto. Here you have um, um, the waveform, um, which is used for that uh, generator to create the automation. In this case, it follows, it follows a sine waveform. But you can have it also triangle, so square, exponential as well. You have also here below a free slider to set the rates or the period, so how long it takes, for example, to move from this point to this to these other points, in terms of period for that or cycle. And you have a, a fine selection here from 0 to 0, 0.9375, a medium from 0 to 9, or a, a much higher um, rate, so you can go from 0 to um, 1270. If you don't want to play with the controls, you have some templates here, so you can click to 16, click close, and you can see that that changed the speed of how the green arrow moves. Of course, you can do a further adjustment. So like so, you change the period, okay? And as you change the period, click close, that will increase your speed. You see it's getting, it's getting faster. Let's decrease it again. Click close. Again, it's faster again. And of course, that will mean that there will be recording which will be longer and others which will be shorter. Now, to have a better example of that, what we are going to do is, uh, let's go to trigger. Let's increase the frequency, sorry, the sensitiveness here and decrease the uh, sequence like so. 
which will still create an addition to the sensitiveness or firing the trigger like that. Uh, I'm trying to gain a position where I have a lot of firing uh, of recording. Yeah, there it is. So in this way, you will start to hear differences in the length in terms of recording. These are quite medium. Okay, let's uh, go back to the trigger, perhaps make this faster again. So something like so. Okay, you can see that some will end very quickly and others will stay on longer because they've been recorded with different lengths based on uh, uh, where this uh, green arrow was when the, recorded ha when the recording happened. Okay, let's make it um, that faster, maybe too fast now. Yep, let's increase the width a little bit. Slow it down a touch. Okay, perhaps uh, a little bit more like that. A little bit higher. See, this, they are all different lengths in terms of duration and play. Okay, depending on what value you had on the length when the recording happened. So remember how this uh, um, works in terms of automation. Because, um, um, and let's stop these. Uh, because we are going to use automation even more when it comes to additional or different parameters. And um, you can use the automation in every time where you see auto here and you see the different dials. Okay, I hope that makes sense and see you in the next video. Bye.